the people's platform good evening and welcome to the people's platform sri lanka is signatory to several international labor conventions and it has a plethora of labor laws the constitution of sri lanka also provides for equality in such a backdrop are our workplaces inclusive tonight's uh, topic of discussion is around creating diverse and inclusive workplaces in Sri Lanka. I'm so pleased to welcome to the studio Professor Arusha Adhikaram from the University of Colombo. Good evening and welcome back to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely lovely to have you here with us again. Um, Arusha, my first question to you is based off my opening statement. Are our workplaces truly inclusive? Do we celebrate diversity? A very good question. While we talk about inclusivity and diversity a lot, there, is, there are a lot of discussions on inclusivity and diversity. We see a lot of organizations talking about how diverse and inclusive they are. Many organizations, mission, vision statements would talk about how, how diverse they are. But um, the numbers show and what we've seen in the industry is that uh, very few organizations are truly diverse and inclusive. And we have a long way to go in terms of uh, recognizing everybody as equals and practicing equality in work workplaces. So like you alluded, um, inclusion and diversity have become buzzwords of sorts. Yes, exactly. And there is a lot of tokenism that happens um, by corporates when it comes to including persons who are usually marginalized by society. So um, I'd like to ask you specifically with respect to uh, LGBTQ plus community, um, what kind of policies uh, do organizations employ because we we know that at present the penal code criminalizes uh, homosexuality and um, there are steps being taken to reverse that uh, however from a business organizational point of view what kind of issues are faced by uh, persons from the LGBTQ community Okay, so again, very few companies are actually concerned about making LGBTQ inclusive uh, workplace, um, their workplaces LGBT inclusive. And so, well, organizations would have these you know, policies where they say we are equal. You know, we treat everybody equally and we practice equality. Mm. But then they might not specifically talk about LGBTQ community or have uh, uh, different practices and different ways to encourage them to apply to the company to show that the company is really inclusive, diverse and inclusive and that they do welcome these LGBT individuals. They might not have um, things in place uh, practices, strategies in place to make sure that they are really included in the workplace. Mm. So many organizations would have, you know, overall policies on diversity and inclusion. But when it comes to specific types of groups of people that needs to be expressly addressed in those policies, uh, LGBTQ plus community is generally overlooked. When we take policies on the one hand and the implementation of these policies, there's a massive disconnect. Yes. Speak to us about this. Yes. So just having policies obviously would not help. You know, in many instances, we see policies being there in the policy manual. It will be, you know, there in certain people's desks, maybe, you know, but uh, it's very important that we effectively implement those policies as well. So, um, so it, uh, it starts with the development of the policy itself. You know, you can't just uh, develop a policy overnight. It has to happen with a lot of discussion, involvement of different parties, looking at the good practices of other organizations, other countries, all of that. And then once you develop those policies, it has to properly go to people, you know, and, and the employees need to feel that this is uh, really an important area of organization. So the top management buy-in is important in that. So the top management has to be a very critical part 
in taking the policies to the employees and then all other uh, uh, policies and pr practices needs to be looked at in light of these policies for example if it's a diversity and inclusion policy then you are training um, procedures your recruitment and selection procedures all that needs to be aligned to that mm. so you can have a policy on diversity and inclusion and say we are an equal company anybody can apply if there is opportunity but if the interviewers are not trained uh, to look mm. into this and identify to actually not consider any of these you know uh, differences uh, of the applicants and carry out a proper interview that matters and in the uh, advertisements that you put how do you put across the advertisement when there is a vacancy mm -hmm. so from there onwards everything has to be aligned with these policies and um, so uh, from top management proper communication and then proper practice mm -hmm. training all that needs to happen for a policy to really uh, be effective in organization and also there needs to be um, uh, monitoring that takes place uh, you need to see whether actually the policy does what it has to do mm -hmm. and then uh, you need to take corrective action if there are areas to be improved so all that needs to be done when you implement a policy any policy for that matter but especially um, diversity and inclusion policies another group that gets overlooked uh, in um, uh, when it comes to business organizations is persons with disabilities um, how does that work yes so again when we have a policy on diversity and inclusion um, um, dis persons with disabilities are also covered in that um, but how ready are companies to recruit and hire these persons with disabilities uh, when you um, have persons with disabilities in organization working in organization it's not only the mindset that needs to be addressed of others around these pe uh, the, these groups of people but also uh, the, ris the the infrastructure you know you need to have the right infrastructure to support them so uh, we've done a study recently one of my master students uh, did a study on persons with disabilities and their career progression right to see that some companies might take them in but then their career progression does not happen you know they might be only recruited for certain positions and they'll be there forever you right. know they they have very few opportunities for progress so things like that and then you of course uh, come across instances of uh, harassment bullying looked down upon and with persons with disabilities always the mindset is as if they lack something you know they might be they are equal and they would have all the qualifications skills and all of that but purely because of their disability they might not be taken in so uh, companies will need to be concerned about this again when they have policies and procedures the training that needs to go into um, is something very important the changing of the mi mindset mm -hmm. of employees of the managers everybody needs to happen uh, Arusha you've done a lot of work when it comes to the intersectionality with gender yes how uh, talk to us about all the problems yes I can go on and on about gender and the issues that women face in workplaces so um, I will start with uh, a main issue that I think is existing that is a national issue the law labor force participation of women in the country okay so during the last 10 years the labor force participation of women has been going down steadily going down so about 10 12 years ago the labor force participation of females was about 37 mm. now it has come down to um, 32 31 32 it's between 31 32 it's a huge issue when especially when we have 52 percent of the population being women and also if you look at um, the education the qualifications of women we see a high number of women passing out from universities passing out from professional bodies and uh, again they drop out somewhere you know we in the national university system we see about 68 percent 70 percent or so 68 percent or so of those who pass out from the universities are females but if you look at the unemployment rate of uh, graduates 
we see about 80 percent something of the unemployed graduates being women. So we have a very serious issue there that needs to be addressed and we see a lot of companies where um, they would uh, be reluctant to hire females in the first place because they are concerned about the abilities of women maybe and also they are scared that women would take maternity leave or you know if you are married and with kids that they will take more leave give priority to uh, their home we have this ideal worker concept where the ideal worker is a worker who is 24 hours uh, connected with the organization who's ready to do anything you know which does not align with the role of a female especially in a patriarchal country like us so you see very few women coming in and even if they do come in then at a certain age in their life in their life cycle they might drop out and of those who do continue to work we see that again they do not progress in their career. We talk about these concepts of glass ceiling, glass cliff, you know, all of these concepts. And we do see it. You take any organization um, uh, in, in your industry and you look at the director board. How many women are there? You look at the top management. How many women are there? So we do see that women are stagnated at a certain level, you know, you, in other words, you can't go beyond a certain level. Uh, so that is another issue that needs to be looked at and discussed a lot. You know, there are a lot of organizations, a lot of researchers that do look into this, but the issue is um, nothing seems to be working you know there are a lot of efforts um, to address these issues and then we also have these issues of harassment especially sexual harassment where more women are sexually harassed at work and not only work when you come to work in the public transport you know harassed you come to, to work in public transport you are harassed and how would the mentality of the individual be when you are harassed on the way and you come to work and if you're harassed at work, how can the person give their 100%? So these are issues uh, that needs to be, of course, looked at. And there are a lot more that we uh, can talk about, of course. Let's talk a bit about uh, this concept of unpaid labor. Mm -hmm. um, I, I recently watched an entire series on TikTok uh, of women who, after marriage, stayed home to be with their children and to look after the household and um, some men would come home and say oh you you didn't really work yeah yeah uh, so one woman starts this trend where she just stops doing all the housework mm. and after a few days he comes home to absolute chaos mm. and this catches on with more and more women doing mm. this mm. Yeah. Um, so we glorify going to work mm. but when women predominantly women stay home uh, nurture children birth and nurture children look after the household uh, cook clean look after the elders look after the elders we kind of disregard that mm. as not very important mm. Mm. Um, and not even amounting to labor of course yes yes and we see that uh, in countries like Sri Lanka also kind of mentality so yeah. how do we go about shifting this talk to us about how problematic this is sometimes people don't even realize that mm. it's their labor mm. and the emotional labor yeah yes so it is issue you know it's sometimes more difficult to stay at home and do all of that than to you know go to work and we also have women who do a full-time job there and then another full-time job at home you know you would get up at three or whatever do everything that needs to be done go to work come back and do uh, the rest as well but it you know if a female stays at home it's her intention it's what she wants yeah it's her prerogative prerogative and that would be fine but then again you have to think um, and see whether it is what she really wants or is it what she thinks that the society wants from her what her family wants from her mm. is she pushed to that uh, position so whatever it is we need to understand that you know whatever you do this unpaid work um, is 
equally important and uh, what is important is that you give support to them as well you know it's not where if you go to work you can't support your wife who's at work who's looking after everything so that that support is needed she needs a support system to do all that work at home as well Hmm. But at the same time, you also need to um, give the opportunity for the individual to reach their dreams as well, right? Yeah. It might not be what the person wants. While they say, I've heard this a lot, where I men say, no, it's her decision to stay at home. Hmm. You know, I've heard this um, in instances where they say she was doing a very good job, but when she had kids, she decided to stay home but what did uh, the partner uh, what role did the partner play in that the, the, if the partner said okay we'll somehow manage we'll we'll have a support system we'll put the child to daycare or whatever it is and we'll the two of us will get through this mm. and provided that support maybe the individual can also proceed to achieve whatever the dream that mm. the individual has which doesn't happen in our context it's always the women uh, who has to do you know all this um, taking care of care work mm. uh, and also we have another element where we say uh, unpaid family workers it's another concept where um, where you actually contribute to the family income you might kind of help your husband's business you might help in farming you know you might while you do your housework you would engage in helping you know your uh, family okay. but you are not paid okay the income is earned by the husband or whoever father or whoever uh, and you are a uh, unpaid family worker we have lot of such females in sri lanka as well all right lots to talk about we are in conversation with uh, professor arusha adhikaram we going for a break we'll be right back people's platform TV1 TV for life confusion surrounds electricity tariff reduction as minister stands with 18% and CEB calls for 3.4% president's powers to increase with proposed anti-terror law warn activists presidential election cannot be delayed the election commission will be empowered on july 17th says dallas chinese research ship docks in the maldives after sri lanka denies permission 100 member indian delegation to sri lanka to visit sites linked to the ramayan will vanidu hasaranga face a penalty for criticizing the umpire platform Welcome back. Uh, we're discussing the importance of creating diverse and inclusive workplaces with the Professor Professor Arusha Adhikaram from the University of Colombo. Um Arusha, what kind of policies and practices must a business organization have um to ensure and enable a diverse and inclusive workplace? Um we might have um viewers watching us who are heads of organizations mm -hmm. or who are um in the field of HR mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. Uh, so tell us what kind of policies and practices okay so i will mainly talk about how you can talk um, make a women friendly workplace mm -hmm. where you have more women working in a workplace but that will apply to other areas of uh, diversity differences uh, in diversity and inclusion as well so uh, it's very interesting to see that some companies are very interested in making their workplaces truly diverse and inclusive so i've come across organizations that actually actually has a good plan you know it's it's in their strategic plan where they say okay by 
2025 we'll have this percentage of staff being women or LGBTQ or uh, disabled persons whatever it is that you can dis uh, decide on we'll have this number of um, for example women um, in our staff and this number of women percentage of women in our middle management this number in our top management and this number in our board of directors mm. maybe so they have a plan and and they have a target and they work towards that target so they have a lot of things that they do to ensure that they reach those targets so one is of course you know promoting their organizations and encouraging women to apply for that women or you know any uh, group of uh, people to apply you have to to um, build that trust in the applicants that it's a workplace that they are where they can work freely hmm. that they'll be treated equally and equity would be practiced so these organizations will start with the advertisements to hiring so they will be very concerned about um, whom they hire uh, in terms of uh, you know the differences they would uh, give e not only equality equity so i've heard many organizations say no we are an equal company you know we, our promotions are you know anybody can apply to for our promotions anybody can apply for our organization to our organization but they have not understood the equity part of it where women for example have a disadvantage uh, at the start itself you know you can't treat uh, everybody equally mm. you know you need to understand the fact that uh, women would have certain other challenges and barriers that uh, prevents them from uh, using these opportunities equally so you might have to give a extra push for them that uh, many companies don't understand but again there are a lot of companies that also understands that and create that environment where anybody can apply and given you know equity would be considered and they have their target in their mind so they will make sure that they meet their target and they have a, a, a lot of policies a plethora of policies that encourage this also starting with um, uh, harassment uh, bullying policy sexual harassment policy and their promotions their training all that they make sure that equality and equity is addressed there are companies that goes beyond their um, they are confined and even help employees with domestic violence I know of this company where they have a 24-hour helpline where if an employee is subjected to domestic violence they can call and they'll be placed in a you know Shelter, a safe yeah. house mm. so uh, some employers go to that extent and then there are also other programs that these companies implement training empowerment you know to the whole lot they identify you not know, their career progression of people and they help people to develop skills um, and you know reach these other levels mm. and then there is this one company who was telling um, me about how they have even changed their equipment so that it is easy for women to use it so this particular equipment that th uh, that the company uses is quite heavy so because they want to encourage more women to be in the staff and to make life easier for women that way is uh, lessened and the height of certain workstations are um, you know uh, done so that women can use it mm. um, so like that you know you go to that text and then there are various specific programs where women are given voice you know uh, where women can discuss about their issues and then come up with solutions because we do have specific uh, issues uh, issues that are you know unique to us so whatever it's whether it's LGBT community or disabled uh, pe persons with disability so this giving them voice also helps a lot and then providing other support you know uh, with our law 84 days of maternity leave is provided working days of maternity leave is provided so it's a must that every organization you know should adhere to sure. they need to give 84 working days or for shop and of um, wages board employees it will be 12 weeks of um, maternity leave but some companies goes beyond that and they say okay six months of maternity leave um, and paternity leave you would have seen there was a lot of discussion of this uh, one company giving 100 days paternity leave so either the mother or the father 
can take it and they were saying uh, that it also encourages uh, more men and women to apply and it reduces the discrimination that might happen during the recruitment uh, or the selection rather okay. in the interview uh, because now the interviewers can't say if we hire a female they'll take the maternity leave mm -hmm. because even if you hire a male they might also take leave because the company gives paternity leave but paternity leave is not something that the law prescribes in Sri Lanka mm -hmm. so they give that and then they care facilities elder care facilities so when you give that women friendly, when you provide that, you know, friendly workplace where you identify the challenges these different individuals face and make that environment where people would be happy to work, they might not drop out, they'll continue to work and happy working yeah. there as well so that they'll contribute their 100%. So those are very important initiatives that companies can actually take and those, many of those would not cost companies much. Of course, having a daycare center and all of that would be a cost. But otherwise, you know, small things. I was, I heard this practice in another country where um, the manager was saying they give parking, a priority parking to pregnant women. So they have very few parking just in front of the office. And there are priority parking for uh, pregnant uh, f employees in the organization. So small things like that, you know, sometimes makes a big difference. Creating diverse and inclusive workplaces ultimately results in higher productivity. Of course, a lot of research and it's, it's a known fact when you have a diverse board of directors, when you have a diverse top management, when you have a diverse staff, those companies outperform always um, other companies. Absolutely. Those have been proven um, enough and more times. Yeah, Th these are research backed yes. facts. Yes. Um, Arusha, the, the issue is that this, dis these discriminatory practices, um, although discouraged by our laws, exist in every realm of society. Mm -hmm. If we take the parliament, if we take our local government bodies, uh, our elected representatives, um, uh, everywhere we go, these discriminatory practices exist. And what we don't do as a society is we don't work on identifying the root causes. These really terrible uh, attitudes that, um, that we have societally, we don't work on overcoming them, we don't work on unlearning them and re relearning behaviors which mm -hmm. are not toxic. Mm -hmm. So my final question to you would be, how do we go about creating this attitudinal shift? Because it has to start from home, and then school, yes. Yes. university, workplaces, the garment factories, to the um, tea estates, to parliament. Well, you've given the answer, I suppose, to the question. Uh, it has to start from home and then go to uh, home, to school, to society, to the neighborhood, uh, everywhere. So we do have, being a patriarchal country, we do have a lot of general stereotyping beliefs that are internalized in us um, and it's very difficult to come out of it so um, it has to start from homes where we talk about we talk about these differences we empower our girls and boys both to pursue uh, their dreams we not only discourage women from going to certain uh, jobs um, going to work and all of that we also discourage uh, boys you know young boys from pursuing their careers or their whatever the interest subjects they want at school or wherever it is and when they grow also you know boys are also put a lot of pressure they have to be the one who earns and support the family that yeah. also puts a lot of pressure on them whereas it can be both who work together so this attitudinal change should come from home where you need to empower boys and girls equally and um, this attitude should not be inculcated, not be socialized, not be given to uh, the children at school and then universities. We, we talk about these issues a lot, uh, but more needs to be done. And then um, at the workplace, generally these issues, especially gender is spoken in March 
during the time of uh, Women's Day. You know, you talk about it and you forget about it. But awareness creation, uh, empowering uh, both men and women, and especially women, because they are the ones who are discriminated the most, or, and also encouraging people to be who they are, and um, giving opportunities for everybody. So all that needs to happen for that this attitudinal change is important and that needs to be part of everything that we do. Thank you very much Professor Arosha Adhikaram. Thanks for this Thank conversation. You. Thank you. Thank you for watching us. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night. Chanadabhitutmaka vidhira api godadhi.